explain this to us. Okay. This is the entire building, 140 feet by 60 feet, which gets us a total of 32 interior enclosures. Okay. None of this has guillotines in it yet for lockdown, you know, depending on how we're going to shut it down. Um, but this would be the building. Each one of the, um, the enclosures, we ended up with a run in between so that you had access if you needed to and kept the cages separate. Okay? So we have gates. You can see up here the gates are kind of drawn a little bit. Um, but what I want, what we're talking about doing is maybe moving the gates farther down here so that they're at this end. So if we want to get, if we have a problem, we want to keep one, one of the wolves separate and bring them in separately. We can shut them down and we can put a guillotine here. That way we have a gate here and we can put the other fence down here. So if you have to lock somebody in between, you can. Okay. Before you get them inside. So, I mean, it's still in flux right now as far as what we're doing. Um, as far as the look. But it's a metal structure. Um, it's a metal building for the most part. Hurricane rated. Um, low, low slope line. And what, are, what we're going to... I'll show you on the next page the elevations. But... Um, as far as construction but what we're looking at is this being the main area to where the water feature would start with this being the pond and the waterfall you know the water filtering through what happens is the water flows all the way through and then we put culverts pipe culverts underneath the sidewalk so it continues to flow underneath underneath each one of these sidewalks it just continues to flow until it gets down to the end with the pool and then at that point it pumps back up to the fountainhead. So this is this is like one half of the building. So this would be a mirror image on the other side. So we we would end up with eight enclosures around this. Um, I had them kind of design rock formations close to the building so that they could have their own dens if they wanted to. I mean we could make this so that you know they have a den inside of there. Um, put a concrete slab in there, whatever the case is, and. Um, you know, get some some interest in there. Okay, and the water on top for the water feature, okay. underneath that can be like the pump cave. Pump rooms and everything. Well, you'd have a cave underneath part of it. One of them you're going to have a pump room under. You know, we, we may end up with a pump room like here. Okay. So that it pumps the water from here back to here and creates the waterfall to come back down again. And flow right, but through. there would be a little bit of room in the front part where there could be like a cave behind the waterfall yes. that yeah, they, they could get into they could and get stay in behind. cool and yep. hide. Yeah, because and... what we would do is kind of end up putting a slab in here. That's what this is showing here is the waterfall coming down. Right. Okay, so this would all be den for the most part. It could be an area okay. for them to relax. Yeah. So that's, that's what this shows. These are openings that kind of come into that space. Okay. And then this is the waterfall coming down over the edge. And you can see from the elevations when I turn the page that, you know, what we're looking at. These are just logs that we have thrown in there in different areas. But um, now this is kind of the floor plan of Okay, and the then enclosure. these are access points into the building? These are access points into the building for volunteers to bring, whether we're bringing food in. Okay. We can bring them in, in between each of the enclosures. Now, you know, we can bring, like I said, we could, we, the doors aren't fixed yet. We just have to figure out, okay, what's the best way to put the guillotines in and what will work best for getting animals from one point to the other. We yeah, we're going to gonna have to figure out how to get the backpack into the building to Correct. feed them. So, I mean, and that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at is, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to set up the guillotines for these different? Now, well, the, all, all these walls here are going to be, these are all block walls in between. Right. Okay. And then these all have um, wire across the top so they can't get up. Right. And I figured... Totally enclosed kennels. Totally enclosed kennels where you have, you know, chain link front and back and then closure at the top with masonry in between. This entire enclosure will be, um, you know, it'll be CMU down low up to like four feet for maintenance. That way we're not, we don't have a metal building sitting on the ground. The metal building is actually ele elevated and it's sitting on the block wall that's a knee wall that's, you know, four like foot tall. Like this house? This kind house of, right, but, but it's going to sit up higher. So okay. the metal panel won't start until like four feet 
which mm -hmm. gets you the point of maintenance. So you're not, you know, like if you have to hose this place mm -hmm. down, you're hosing down an epoxy CMU wall and not a metal panel wall, which is not good for the metal panel. Okay. So we're trying to make it so it's maintenance, you know, as, as far as ease of maintenance later and on. And then we talked about something in the what center kind of for right. food prep or we sink. Do, so we have all kinds of room in the middle here. Okay. In oh. So we can do whatever we want to do in the so middle. So like when we're bringing the food in to feed them, we would have a place to set it and, and right. rinse the tubs. Right. And we can bring, we can come in this way. Like you'll have two main, two main ways to come in for okay. the food. And that's because these are the access gates here. You got one here and one here. You got one here and one here. That way you can come straight in. So if you keep this locked down and like this side locked down, that way you have direct access in. Okay. That way, you know, if somebody does have one of the animals out, they can't get into that space at all. They can't get through and into here. Okay. And then these would just become storage areas at these ends. You know, each one of these ends we could use for storage. You know, we could put shelving in there up to a certain height if we need to store stuff in there. We have a place to keep it. Yeah, all these outside doors that they have here, those will all need to be like guillotines. Yeah. Because I see the animals coming in here and then someone operating them yep. from this side as right. to which one, which they go into. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out some way to have barriers like this at different points to Correct. restrict their movement, movement all around. around. Right. So, Building. I mean, it's just a matter of where do we put those barriers, I mean. And that can be a slide guillotine, like what um, Guayachobi has. They have the slide guillotine so that it could go in when we need it and could come out mm -hmm. when, when we don't want that part obstructed. Now, the other thing is that I don't, I mean, I didn't have them draw it in here and, you know, we hadn't talked about it, but are we going to have direct access for them to come into the space and not come out into a secure enclosure and then back out. I mean, you know, these are all things we have to work out because these will all be penetrations through the wall. Are we right. going to put a guillotine here to get them into that space so they're not out here? Well, if you put them in that pathway between the two enclosures, you got to have a guillotine back here somewhere. Well, you also have to you you have fence fighting between unless right. you put another double fence up on each one of those right. pathways. Yeah. You've got fence fighting and getting so them in that pathway. It could be an issue. Could be an issue because right. they're going to be more interested in fence fighting. Yep. So I'm, I'm thinking we almost need to have some sort of an entry, even if it's a dog sized type entry. Right. From here directly From there into directly space. into okay. the space because I don't think it will work to. I mean, that isn't a bad idea for an issue if we need to get them out there and we can't get them out any other right. way, but we definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I could see fence fighting happening in those spaces yeah, if we tried to it. use it on okay. a regular basis. So that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do something to get them in to these spaces. And we almost need to create something out here where we can create like a chute, you know, where, and I don't even know how we would do that. If it would be like rocks, the way we position rocks or something, like the backpack, I'm thinking, how are we going to get them in at night? You know, because they're so afraid of everyone and getting them used to this feeding pattern is going to be an no, issue at first. Mm -hmm. issue. But if we had like a natural shoot uh, based, made out of like a, a, a rock formation or something where we can go out and go in with them and kind of drive them towards the door, you right. know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yep. We, like, until, a cattle, and, like a cattle shoot. Yeah, like a cattle shoot, but yeah. more of a natural looking one where we could, um, if we had to vet them or whatever, we could drive them into that and kind of steer them into the area we want them to go into. Okay, well, when you were talking about moving them from one place to the other where you could actually just... They would, of, come, they, would you... they would come in here at night and be locked down in here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so say the backpack's in this group, we would bring them in here and lock them down and maybe we, we have our divider thing here, so we bring them in here and we put them in 6, 7, 8, and 9. So Alright, so out. the next day when you let them out after feeding, they go out into this next enclosure. Oh. You just open this door right. and let them go into that enclosure. 
So then they go, you've moved them, essentially you've moved them from this enclosure to this enclosure, and then the next time you bring them in, they go here, and then you come and let them back out into this enclosure. So you can rotate them from one enclosure to the next all the way around so they get the smells of the other animals, the, the different types of environments, whether it's here. the waterfall or the pond, whatever we put in that enclosure, they'll get a different thing to explore and experience when they get let out. Yeah. And maybe we don't rotate them to the next enclosure every time we feed. Maybe we do it once a week, but at least we would have the option of shifting them and letting them have those different type of enrichment activities but each enclosure would be a level four because of the guillotines mm -hmm. so it wouldn't matter which one you guys in because all of them would be capable of housing him or tiberius or you know any yeah. of the other level four animals so basically what we have is we could take the same profile and move it on the site so we would have i mean we'd have two of these probably initially and then for the cat enclosure you would take half, half of this and make the habit and make these bigger. Right. Yeah. These, these, these would need to be bigger. Right. So you just make this half the size of the building. Then you could have all your food prep area on one wall, and all these would be your enclosures on the other side. And so you'd have four enclosures for the big cats. Mm hmm. And I think according to our diagram, we figured out we could have three of these full sized ones and have two of the half sized ones. Yeah. Yep. We have one full size, one full size, and one full size over here. You could have this half size and this half size back here. So you could have two half size, three full size. Okay. Which would allow for future expansion. A lot more animals mm -hmm. than what we have now, really. Right. Yeah, cats. Uh, there are so many lions and tigers out there. Lions and tigers and bears are the ones most in need of rescue. There aren't any really cougars, leopards, smaller cats that we've found that need placement right now. So that would essentially be the outside space with each one of these being approximately 4,000 square feet. The, the end ones are a little bit bigger, gives them a little more room to roam around and get them, you know, so they'll have a little more enrichment as they get to the end units. That's like, you know, once a week that they'll so be one of those units. So this is like eight units, but there'd be, be two units. groups of eight units. There'd be two groups of eight units for the for the packs, oh, and then you'd have yeah. one group of four units for the big cats. Initially, Initially. but we would plan for eventually having three groups of eight right. units mm -hmm. on the property, and two of the half un the four mm -hmm. for the cats. In the smaller animals. Smaller animals are in a different area. They're going to be more up They're front by the be orchard. Closer to the front, so it's closer to the orchard area, which is up by the front where the visitor okay. center is. If this mm -hmm. is the orchard, all the small animals will pretty much go in this space. Okay. Which is a, it's a huge space. You can you can wrap them around the corner over here and bring them down this way. I mean, this is there's a lot of room up here. Good. 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 Awesome. And we just need to remember not to not put the foxes right by the gate. <laughs> and then, these are the starting of the working elevations. Um, so this would be if you're standing in the you know, standing in the runs, looking back at the building. The building height is very, I mean, it's, I kept it to a minimum of 12 feet to the underside. That way, you know, we're not dealing with height issues and, you know, making this come up above. What we're going to do is we're going to put taller plants through here, you know, to hide the building. What I was talking about earlier is that we're going to end up with a wall about this height all the way through, which will be the concrete block. The concrete block. This will all be CMU. That way, from the inside and the outside, ease of maintenance. Mm -hmm. I didn't want the metal panel sitting so close to the ground to where, you know, we may have issues later on with mice and things trying to get up into the panels even though we have drip edges and everything else to seal it off I just thought it would be a lot easier to maintain if we keep the CMU at a certain point and then the metal panel would just start from there and go up. 
What if we made these dens that you were talking about, these rock formations for dens, make that the entrance into the building? You could. You could actually have a guillotine on the back side if you wanted to. That way, if we needed to, even... You could put the guillotine inside, have yeah. this the front of the den, mm -hmm. and then have the guillotine on the back side, mm -hmm. and then force them to go in the back yeah. way. Yeah. And you could do that. That way you don't see them back here. You don't yeah. see them in the face. And then we could just do the tall plants, you know, whether it's bamboo or whatever. Something's going to grow fast, and it's going to be sturdy just to hide the building so it mm -hmm. looks more like a natural enclosure for the most part. And that way they can get behind there and hide if they need to, but, you know, bamboo is a good... It's a fast-growing plant that'll give plenty of shelter behind there, you know, if they're skittish about people, so... Well, that's kind of the game plan. You can see the waterfall here and a den behind it. So all this up above here is like a retention, will be like a holding pond, and then the water will fall over. So that's what all this is. This is all the water that falls over from that den. And they can get in from the side and get back in there if they want to. Same thing on this side. So that's a pretty neat enclosure. That's, <laughs> that's my favorite thing about the whole favorite you can, you idea see, so You can far. see it from here, too. This is on the corner. Because I think that'll help them stay cooler, too, right. in the in the summer and the well, heat. Well, not only that, you could probably cool, the, you know, put in a huge block of ice in there or something and let it cool the water. But, or you know, that's that's them. kind of, that's the overall rendering of what we're, of what we're shooting for. Um, you know, they'll, once I get this back to them, uh -huh. once I get it back to Rocco, he'll go ahead and finalize everything, make the changes, get all the... So these are entry doors between the paths? Correct. Between these are the, the four-foot paths? Right. These are the, these are the enclosures. Those are the entry doors. And we'll still need those, really, for maintenance, yes. probably, to get in between yeah. the enclosures yeah. to do maintenance. You, I don't think you're going to be able to get away from it. No, 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 no. As, you know, if you keep it there. that way, and you, if you plant stuff along there, it won't be an issue for them, you know, between the enclosures. We have, like, enclosures. four feet or five feet between the, the ones Right, but there. we don't have easy access between them uh -huh. right now, uh -huh. because they're all closed off with chain link. Right. Yeah. So th this would be really easy access for everybody. You'd end up with your chain link, you know, your, you'd end up with, like, down here at the end, when this eventually comes out, you'd end up with a gate down here at the end, you know, door, where this would just continue across. So that's the intent, you know, where this thing is heading right now. Okay. Um, you know, he'll, Rent Rocco will do a, he'll do a master plan. He still has, he's... Show us this first page again, because I didn't get it on okay. video. That's the front of the building. This will be the, the front of the visitor center. Um, we would do party board siding over CMU walls, so it's all hurricane rated. Um, the hardy board is cement board. It's not going to deteriorate. It's going to last longer than any of us probably will. Um, metal roof because of longevity. That way we don't have to maintain the roof so much. We'll do a metal roof which is pretty um, typical for you know, Florida. South Florida to give it that woodsy huh. look for and the most I part. And it's, it's good for like embers that start to fire someplace. Right. Um, the inside of the building is pretty much set up as exhibit space. Oh, that's not showing up real well, is it this time? Can we move it to the shade? Okay. Um, this being exhibit space, visitors... Welcome center. Welcome center. And then this being lecture hall that can be divided into two spaces, um, or can be, remain one big space. Outside deck, um, food prep area, which has been, we've modified a little bit to allow for a bigger food prep area and move storage over into here. Um, get rid of the two center offices and make more of a perimeter type seating area. Have a small kitchen area for volunteers, refrigerator for them to store their stuff. Have a microwave here so if they want to eat lunch, you know, they can do that. And then we'll just end up with two offices at the front of the building. Um, Men's and women's restrooms, all handicap accessible. 
uh, janitor's room, which is, you know, pretty much um, just a sink in there Mom for maintenance of the rest of the building. Um, we'll have a corridor that comes out so that you don't have to go through the food prep area to get outside. Volunteer access will be out here, out to the back. Um, we'll have, this will be where the secure building starts, right here, the secure area. So the fence line will be right here, so this is where the security will start. Uh, the When we do food prep, we'll be able to bring everything out here to the mule, and out we go to you know the rest of the site to go ahead and feed the animals. Um, like I said, this main this keeps a separate corridor just for volunteers to come in and out of that way. There's no cutting through the the food prep area. We'll set the food prep area to, up area to where we have three separate sinks. Keep this one for fruits and vegetables, and keep this one for meat prep. Um, we'll have roll-in bins that we can use for the food. You know, as we're taking it outside the mule, we'll have food prep bins that can slide up underneath the counter. You pull them out do the food prep, throw them in there, and take them out. So it'll be easy to wheel things in and out of the building. Two separate coolers for when the meat comes in. We'll have the two... One freezer and one cooler? Yeah, one refrigerator, one freezer, and then we have one that's dry storage that can be used for whatever, whether it's yard tools, whatever, but it can, if need be, it can later on be converted to another cooler or another freezer. Um, this gets us our dock that we need for loading and unloading of the meat. That way, big box fan or whatever can come in, pull up here, unload here. This dock is a little bit lower, so if a pickup truck comes in, the pickup truck can load here. And then, where we had the dumpster, we moved the dumpster out to the site in order to minimize the amount of flies. And so this, again, could be another area of, you know, for pulling up a pickup truck or whatever the case is, pull it up into that space. And then, so we'll have three areas to load and unload supplies for the sanctuary. And then, the only other thing is the vet clinic, which is still under development, but it gives us a basic footprint of what we're going to do for that property or for that space. Um, we've talked about two large exam rooms and one smaller exam room. Um, an office with an area to sleep so that if you have to stay there overnight for surgery reasons, we'll have a Murphy bed that folds down and then you have the opportunity to sleep there so somebody can be on staff 24 hours a day if they need to be for monitoring. Um, a little area over here, we're going to shorten up this building so we don't have the bump out there and we'll just make this a little kitchenette area just for basic food prep separate from the surgery prep or the vet prep area which is back in here. We have an area for the med gas, washer and dryer location, um, storage area for linens, and then our mechanical closet will be on the other end. And then all the outdoor recuperating kennels are pretty much under development right now. They're not they're just penciled in just to kind of show what direction we can go with it but all these are still under development and will be and further developed. We talked about these being under a roof right. but being outside and then that being totally outside not under a roof. Right. Maybe an exercise yard back behind that's a little bit bigger with concrete walls separating them so the animals can't fight. And then this would be a bigger rehab area for like a bigger cat or another large animal if we acquire any other in the future like bears. And that's basically where we're at right now. Um, we'll do the color renderings next with all the pretty pictures that will be submitted for, um, you know, so we can do some fundraising. All right, and when do you think we'll have those? Three weeks. Very cool.